Hey everyone, we're back for, this one is going to be a movie mainline rewind. Okay, from a couple of weeks ago, Bruce Perky, maybe even three weeks ago, you mentioned the death of Dick Long. And this was a this was something that we really tabled uh, as far as we wanted to review this movie. At least all of us, had, I know Lewis had seen it and he, and he liked it as mm-hmm. well. So I was excited for just me and Eric to go check out the death of Dick Long. Um, before, before we get to what the movie's about, Bruce, what made it stand out for you? Why did you really want to see this in the first place? Well, I mean, I wouldn't say I was super hot to go see it. I, I'd heard a little bit about it, a little bit of buzz. I heard it kind of up and down on it, actually. And um, it just intrigued me. And I kind of went in somewhat tempered um, expectations because um, I hadn't seen the previous film, which was what the... Swiss Army Man, Swiss but I'd, Army heard, Man. I'd heard a lot of bad things about it, so I actually haven't seen it yet. So I was like, okay, I don't know what this is gonna be like. And I went in kind of thinking this is gonna be uh, Southern Coen Brothers, which it definitely has some comparisons there. But I was, um, I was pleasantly surprised, especially by the turns of some of the characters and the surprising level of subtlety as it goes along that I wasn't mm-hmm. expecting. Mm-hmm. Um, and some of the performances kind of blew me away uh, and just the way they kind of rolled out in ways that I wasn't expecting after the first, I don't know, 30 minutes or so. So, Yeah, and it. Eric, did you hear about this movie before having Bruce recommend it to us during that episode? Yeah, that I want to say either heard it on Cinematics or Film Vault, possibly. Uh, I definitely heard of it. I hadn't seen it until recently. Um, uh, same deal with the uh, Bruce. I haven't seen Swiss Army Man, and it That's... just it, it just wasn't a move like Swiss Army Man on its own. It's like didn't seem to really grab my attention. Um, but then after watching this, I think maybe I'll go back and check out Swiss Army Man because I did dig this one quite a bit. Oh, you did. Yeah. Oh, you so you did dig it quite. Okay, so that that's a yeah. good thing. I'm looking up Swiss Army Man right now. Here's the thing: Swiss Army Man came out in 2016. Okay, mm-hmm. and I did review it with Anderson on on the pod. It's directed by Dan Kwan and Dan, Daniel Scheinert. Scheinert. Mm-hmm. Scheinert. Who, who Scheinert is the, the director of this film. Okay. Yes. Um, the Death of Dick Long. I and I remember. I don't know if I really tore that movie apart, but I ended up, if I recall, really not liking Swiss Army Man, thinking it was a one-trick pony of a film because it was a weekend weekend at Bernie's meets a horror thriller thing, and and it has a really interesting ending. Here's the I'm thing. Not, I, I'm, I'm nodding my head like, I agree. I haven't seen it, but yeah, <laughs> everything you're saying is absolutely This is right. what I've heard. Look, <laughs> all you need to know... You, there's nothing wrong with you nodding your head, Eric, because whenever someone says weekend at Bernie's, every every person on this earth should nod their head because that's a, a universe, universally loved, beloved film, which by the way, I still ha- I haven't seen that movie in years. I wonder if it, that movie still holds up weekend at that's Bernie's. A, that, you know? That's a good question. <laughs> but <laughs> I ended up really not liking Swiss Army Man, and that's why I did not see The Death of Dick Long until Bruce Perky, your opinion, I do trust, I said, okay, you know what? I'm going to give this movie a shot. Dan Kwan did, was not on board for The Death of Dick Long. So this is just a movie directed by Daniel Scheinart. Mm-hmm. I ended up really loving this movie. And yeah. to your point, Eric, after watching The Death of Dick Long, I want to actually go back and <laughs> revisit Swiss Army Man. Maybe I was in a bad effing mood like I usually am, maybe in a depressed state. And maybe I just took out my anger out on this movie because I remember when it ended, I I remember thinking, oh, I kind of like this movie. And then a couple of days later, I, I'm taping the show with Anderson. And for some reason, I think I, I really tore into this one. I, I think I tore into it. And I want to actually revisit Swiss Army Man just based on the quality of the death of Dick Long. Now, I wonder how much is based on the writing too. I, I mean, I haven't seen the other movie either, but I wonder if the writing is the biggest difference because I feel like the writing, plus the acting in this, and we're going to get into it obviously, but I feel like the writing in this could have gone wrong in so many ways yeah. and it doesn't in my opinion. So Yeah, the screenwriter is Billy Chu. Yep. C-H-E-W. And mm-hmm. I'm, not, I'm not good at premises, but I'm just going to start it off. With, you know, So this yep. movie's set in Alabama, 
really way past midnight towards <laughs> early in the morning. Bruce Perky, you know a thing or two about Alabama, correct? Do we, yeah. are you, yeah? Yeah, you I can tell. I mean, I started watching it and like, not from the characters per se, but from just the, the foliage and the way it looked, I was like, and I didn't know when I went to it, it was Alabama. I went, man, this looks like Alabama. And then I saw a license plates at Alabama and I looked it up and it was filmed south of me, uh, closer to Birmingham. I'm in North Alabama. Um, and uh, I could definitely tell. Oh. Uh, character wise, I mean, the characters are a little bit more stereotypical. We'll get into that. But uh, yeah, Alabama. <laughs> okay. So, so the characters, it's Zeke Olson played by Michael Abbott Jr. There's Earl Wyeth played by Andre Highland. And there's Dick Long. I don't even, <laughs> the Dick Long, we don't see. A He's Dick Long the director. Played by, the, by the director, Daniel right. Schoenner. Yeah. He has a, uh, the, it's not a spoiler. He has he has a little bit of a small role in this movie. Okay, so mm -hmm. essentially these three guys they're they party. They're they they party during the week. They drink. They play music. Yeah. They they do weird <laughs> things in the basement. We don't know what they do. They just they're they're a bunch of layabouts or they're just they're buddies. What yeah. what happens is during one crazy evening or morning, Dick Dick Long ha he has what seems to be blood coming out of his gut stomach. Maybe it's a a bullet wound maybe there's some some something's coming out of his stomach and they they have to drive him to the local hospital and instead of actually putting him into the emergency room they're so scared the buddies earl and zeke they carry him and they drop him right in front of the hospital or i guess what is it the emergency center and yeah the er there yeah the er there yeah so they they drop him off and <laughs> and then what happens is they think everything is going to be fine their their buddy dick is going to be treated for his wounds, he's probably hemorrhaging. Who knows what's going to happen? And unfortunately, the next day, to I guess their shock, <laughs> they shouldn't be shocked because they really bungled this whole thing. Dick Long right. is dead. He's he's dead. Right. Dead as a doornail. And what what ensues is this mystery on how will these buddies can they conceal this this death cover up? Did they kill Dick Long? How did Dick Long die? Uh, should we be rooting for them? What is the deep, dark secret? What happened? How did he pass away? And that's really the premise and, of this film, I yeah, think. Yeah, exactly. And I want to say that you don't even know that there's a big how to that at first, because at first, the way they're partying, they're pretty out of control for a weeknight, I feel like. They kind of have this montage, and they're shooting off fireworks, and they're you know, doing all this stuff, and you're like, Easily you could conceive that that night ended with someone getting hurt accidentally. You yeah, know what I mean? Shooting like, at beer bottles. At, at, yeah. At, yeah. Yeah. So you don't light necessarily. A, they light a couch on fire. For, yeah. There's, there's enough stuff, stuff in that montage. Like, oh, oh yeah. shit. There is <laughs> have you ever light, has any one of us lit a uh, couch on fire? I've never done that. Not I, a couch. <laughs> I've thrown a TV out of a third story window. Oh, what, out of rage or out of fun? Uh, was we're, college thing we had a fire in the middle of the street with skateboarders going through it after a show one time that happened we used to have uh, uh firework yeah. fights like oh yeah yeah bottle rockets and stuff that's roman like, candles roman candles are the yeah. way to go yeah we, we would take the artillery shells without the without the tube <laughs> and just like cut the wick down light it and then wait a bit and then throw it we're real safe with fireworks is what i'm getting yeah at. <laughs> same <laughs> <laughs> we live near i don't know where you live we live near um they used to call them all the different indian reservations because in the northwest you could go to the indian reservations to get all the illegal fireworks everyone just went there bought them they call it boom city you buy them all you bring them back and these yeah it's problems <laughs> problems everywhere yeah well fireworks they're a part of that the big visuals in the first opening minutes of this film and you're thinking the death of dick long i guess from a superficial level because of Swiss Army Man, cinephiles will think, oh, this is another gimmicky film about a dead guy. And there's, mm -hmm. it's set in Alabama. Oh, there's songs by Nickelback in here. Oh, yeah. There's Creed. That, that was a huge hurdle for me getting through this movie. <laughs> I, I, I let it go because um, the characters in it, I, I know those characters. I've seen people like those characters. So they really rang true to me. And they do listen to that fucking bullshit ass music. So... I was like, right. oh, I fucking hate Stain, but these guys would totally listen to Stain, so I'll just kind of let it go. You know, but, yeah, that, this, 
once um, again, they start with the stereotypes and they slowly subvert them. I think that's the other thing about it, or at least make yeah. the characters broader. And I think that's the yeah. The I I wouldn't say they subvert them. They just get a little deeper than the yes. The, you know, exactly right. That's the, that's a better way to say it. But you know, yeah. you, you <laughs> mentioned you were mentioning stained, disturbed. Okay, the the scene stealer in this movie is Earl Earl Wyeth, played by Andre Highland. He's the guy who has all the the funny lines. I mean, he mentions, you know, I, this is one of those movies, I think, I don't know if you mentioned this on your review, Bruce, but you can, you need to watch it several times. If you really like this movie, you have to catch it a couple more times because there's some really funny scenes and you really want to catch the dialogue when Earl Wyeth is talking about, you know, I have an emergency and someone, this, his next door neighbor, she, uh, she's this girl who's really into him. She says, what kind of emergency? It's, it's a family emergency or it's just kind of a normal emergency. <laughs> He's just trying to describe, he puts several modifiers in front of emergency and you just know this guy early. He's just unpredictable and he's funny. He likes a certain type of mustard. He's just a weird, interesting guy. But to Eric, to your point, you were saying one of the reasons why you, you stomach the whole Nickelback thing was because you know these people. Yeah. And I think what this guy Daniel did, Shiner did with his film and the script from uh, Billy Chu, they could have gone for the low hanging fruit and made the death of Dick Long an ultra violent movie, throw it in with a whole bunch of stupid Southern jokes, redneck or hillbilly. They could have thrown Nickelback, Stained, Disturbed, all that straight ahead rock right under the bus. It could have been just an overblown Fargo as um, Coen Brothers type movie. But Bruce, can you talk to it just really goes the other way. And you know what? I think the people who will be disappointed, there's, I'm, I want to talk about the people who will be disappointed in this mo movie. I think it will disappoint people who are looking for a low hanging fruit, just visceral fun over yeah. the top experience because the death of Dick Long is actually, and this is what surprised me, actually a pretty subtle and layered film. I, I don't know that it would disappoint them. I think it might, I'm, I think it might surprise them. Um, you know, think, well, first of all, the, the name and the poster death of Dick Long doesn't really tell you too much about it other than it's got a silly name, but uh, I think it, it, like if you were going in looking for violence and it's, it's not really violent at all, but it is, it is pretty uh, tense. Um, you know, seeing, uh, I don't know how much we want to talk about now, but like uh, the uh, gas station scene. Yeah. His daughter's in the gas station. And he I looks love in the that back scene. Seat. I, I won't get into it more than that, but you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, but there, there's a bunch of scenes like that that are just really suspenseful. Um, yeah. I think that has something to do with them setting up the characters as characters. Like at first, they just seem like a bunch of idiots doing idiot shit they probably messed something up and got someone killed as a result and you know so it's like screw those guys but then as it goes on you kind of almost want them to get away with it yeah and so then yeah at least for me it got suspenseful there yeah i think it might be one of those where like you were saying if you're looking for a visceral experience you might normally be uh, disappointed that you didn't get that but I think the suspense would overtake that to where uh, it might be one of those where it wasn't what I was expecting but I can dig this too Bruce you were saying you were say I was going to say I was going to just, just piggyback on what he was saying which is suspense is exactly the right word I think Eric because this is like the textbook Hitchcockian example of a suspense I don't know what that story is exactly but there's I think suspense, when Hitchcock described it in one, was something like, you can have a guy sitting at a desk and a bomb explodes and everyone's shocked and surprised, but that's not suspense. But if you show a guy sitting at a desk and then you have the camera go down and show the bomb and then go back to, with a timer, and then go back to the guy, now you've got suspense because the audience knows, he doesn't know, and you know that there's a time limit. And in this, there are multiple scenes in this movie that kind of do that, where it's like, you know something, a couple of the characters know something, but some other characters don't know and you're waiting to find out, oh crap, how is this going to play out? Because you know what's going to happen. You're just like, when and how, you know? So. Yeah, yeah. 
we ha- we also have to mention you mentioned this in your review, Bruce, in your earlier review on your YouTube channel. Virginia Newcomb yeah. plays Lydia Olson, the wife of the main character of the film, Zeke Olson. He's the main guy, played by Michael Abbott Jr. But Virginia Newcomb as Lydia Olson, she's the wife who has to put up with Zeke's S H I T all the time because and and his friends because they're probably while she's working really hard at her day job and taking care of their daughter, Zeke and his buddies are <laughs> what's the name of their cover cover band, Bruce? Pink Freud. <laughs> Boy, <laughs> this is why I think this movie is really sublime. Because first of all, that's a funny name. Yeah. A on one level, it's we laugh at it. B, if you know anything about Pink Floyd, they're probably the most intellectual and smartest rock band out there as far as the way they approach their music. And all Pink Floyd probably does is on their free time listen to Stained, Disturbed, and Nickelback. So why the heck would they be called Pink Floyd in the first place it, this movie just goes really weird directions i think um so virginia newcomb's really good also i wanted to mention sarah baker as officer dudley she is this is her first real case she's sort of been a i guess pencil pusher just someone who who's, who's sort, sort of a tag along person in in the department and this is her first time where she actually gets to try to piece this dick long mystery together because you know there's there's a car that goes missing presumably stolen she's start starting to this is i guess she's the um what is the francis mcdormand character i would suppose in fargo she almost has that big of a sneaky big role in this movie i thought it was uh the i definitely i definitely picked up francis mcdormand from fargo actually this movie's a lot like fargo um in a bunch of different ways but uh uh, who was the uh, uh, who was the one above her, the oh. older cop lady? Yeah, she's so she's funny. the one. She's the one I got the Francis McDormand vibe from, right? Because uh, 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 Sarah Baker, she didn't come until later a little bit. Yeah, it starts off with the the older lady with the cane just walking around. Yeah, I've got which to... was an interesting choice for a uh, police officer. And she's putting a little bit of alcohol. Is she putting alcohol in her, in her mug or thermos in the beginning? Yeah, yeah. You know, again, it's just a little touch. You see it and you laugh. And the director could have gone a couple more beats to make it a little bit more outrageous. But he holds back. Right. It, it, this seems like a movie that could be really crazy and cheesy and tongue-in-cheek. And it's surprisingly, the, a lot of this movie... To Eric's point about the tension, the the selling point, along with the performances, is the absolute tension you feel, especially around the second half, when you wonder if these these buddies are really going to get it or not, if they're going to be caught or not, and whose side, whether you're siding with the officers or or the guys, you're just you're already. It's just a sort of really. I, I was nervous. I was nervous. There's that one that one sequence towards the end. We're going to talk about spoilers towards the end of this little mini pod, but I, I was surprised at how much of a Hitchcockian kind of, fi- kind of film this was. Yeah. yeah, I agree. And I think that's that subtlety or that um, kind of the grounding. It keeps grounding itself when it could have gone broader. And I, once again, I think that's what we're talking about that makes it kind of special where every moment where it could have just gone a little overboard, it doesn't do that. It, it pulls it back a little bit. And um I was going to say, Eric, I think I agree too, what you were saying about Marge Gunderson, I, the character that you're talking about, um, Dool- D- Dudley, yeah, Officer, Officer Dudley, who's the younger one in this. I agree the older one is more like Marge because Marge was always kind of the kind of the head cheese. People underestimated her, but she always was kind of in charge and she was confident and everything, whereas Dudley is kind of like people just, they're just giving her stuff to do and just saying like, oh, go do that. And she's just taking the beat, taking it and going with yeah. it, you know? So well, no one expects also, her to do. She's also kind of getting lucky a lot of times, like yes. like not not so much figuring it out, but she happens to be at the right place at the right time to catch some. Inf- I mean, she's she has a wherewithal to catch information and know that it means something. But I don't think 
Um, I, I'm going to stop again. I, <laughs> let me let me know when we get to uh, spoilers. Yeah. There's spoilers. There's a lot of things you'll spoil if you do it. I will. Yeah. I will say this though. There is going to be. I understand why some people really enjoy it. I've been look. I looked at Twitter, and a lot of people were saying this is one of the more underrated films from 2019. You have to check out the death of Dick Long. Obviously, all three of us agree with that. That it's an. We all like the film, but yeah. I can see why people really absolutely dislike the movie, and. That, that's going to be in our spoiler section. There, and this is my warning to, to people who are listening to, to this mini, mini pod. There's a twist in this movie regarding Dick Long. And you're going to, I'm not going to, we're not going to tell you what that twist is until we get to the spoiler. But you're, by the time that twist happens, you're either going to be on board and you're, yeah. or you're just going to say, bail out. You're going to be out. <laughs> what, what would they say, Eric? Because I don't swear. They would say nay. They'd say nay to this. They'd say F it, right? They would say <laughs> yes. F this ish. I, F- ironically, the main characters of this movie, if they were watching this movie, would turn away at that point. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's just one of those movies where you will there will be people bailing by the yeah. half halfway mark and they will feel that they may have wasted their time watching yeah, this movie. for sure. So that I is a warning. It, yeah, remember, it's A24, so that also should help people get an idea. Of, like, they're going a different kind of movie. A24 always tends to bring something a little bit twisty. So that should hopefully weed out some of those people. So Right. So listeners, watchers, whatever you're going to do, if you're, if you're thinking of the death of Dick Long as a cheap, over-the-top, fun type of film that's it has its fun moments it is entertaining but it's a lot more subtle than you think it's dramatic and there is a galvanizing point in this movie that you this we are warning you okay we are warning you that um i invested this is my first purchase on voodoo it's currently available on voodoo you could have rent i think you can rent it for either 2.99 or 3.99 yeah and for a dollar more you can own it i decided just own it and and, because i know bruce you, re- you really enjoyed it. I said, I'm, I'll, I'm glad I, I spent that extra dollar. My only complaint before we get to the spoilers is I checked on iTunes. For $14.99, you can buy it. I don't have the gig space on my computer for this, but it also comes with, I think, audio commentary from, from the cast and crew. Oh, that would be interesting to hear on yeah. this one, for sure. Yeah, and I, I did a little bit more digging, um, two seconds of digging. It's on Blu-ray. I, I don't think... I don't know if the cast and crew commentary comes with that Blu-ray and that would really suck if the commentary is only available on iTunes. That is my only real complaint with the death of Dick Long because after, you know, I'm not going to ask for four or five bucks to get all these extras, but hopefully when I check out the Blu-ray, it will have those extras because I just don't want that to live on, on iTunes. We all love Blu-rays and, and I hope down the line, this gets enough of a cult following where they can, justify a an expanded physical media release of the death of dick long this seems like it's just destined to have a cult following i mean there's gonna be people that love this movie and find it and discover it this is gonna be one of those kind of movies that if you know your friends you'll show it to your friends you know what i mean yeah Yeah. and like you said i think it does have that rewatchability if you get past the twist and you are the galvanizing point and you like it there is a lot of character stuff that could be fun to rewatch and to capture if you enjoy this movie so i think that cult cult following is kind of destined for this movie so okay so before we get to the spoiler section just final thoughts on this movie and just final wrap-up review on what you guys loved about it eric first final wrap uh, up on. back to the physical media if this comes out on dvd or blu-ray um i'm buying it this is it's definitely a movie that that i enjoyed and i'd probably watch more than once and I, I also think it's one of those movies that um, it's definitely funny in parts, as suspenseful and tense as it is. It's definitely funny, but I get the sense that it's a lot funnier than I thought it was the first time, if that makes yep. sense. Yeah. Uh, Big Lebowski is kind of like that. The first time I yes. saw Big Lebowski, I'm like, yeah, that was pretty good. And then about uh, the 50th uh, time I've seen, <laughs> about the uh, 50th uh, time Bruce. I've seen. Uh, I don't know why it does that sometimes. <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry about the 56th but, uh, time. But uh, the fiftieth time I've seen Big Lebowski, then it was like, oh, this movie's hilarious. Same with Boogie Nights, actually. Boogie yes. Nights was a complete bummer the first time I saw it, 
And then after I watch it like 10 more times, I'm like, oh, this is a comedy. All yeah. those movies you're describing, <laughs> and I think this one, I, I agree, is like that. Um, the first time you watch it, you're so focused on the plot that yeah. that takes your brain and you can notice the other stuff, but it doesn't, you're, you're not allowed to allowing yourself to just kind of enjoy like the interactions between the characters just for themselves. But I can see on the second or third watch, which I haven't done yet, that now that you know the plot, you can kind of let that go a little bit. Like, you know what it's about, you know what's going to happen and you can watch like those early, I guarantee those early interactions between Earl and Zeke are hilarious and, I, and <laughs> hilarious. And there's a lot of other little ones. I seem to remember there's one with um, later on and not talking about what happens there, but between Earl and um, Dick Wong's wife at a school. I remember that interaction being really interesting and, and cool yeah. too, but really, really quiet. But I bet you if I watch that again, I would really love that scene as well. Just little stuff like that, that doesn't really add a lot to the plot, but it adds a lot to the characters, I think. So, yeah. I'm not buying the soundtrack. Hard pass on the soundtrack. Yeah. But, <laughs> but that's a, you know what's I'm so funny? You. I checked out the Death of Dick Long official Twitter. They never released an official soundtrack, but... Eric, good news for you. They're, they have they officially released. They have their own Spotify playlist. So I, after no, this taping, no, I will send no. you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can send me whatever you want. I ain't listening to it. <laughs> those songs enough. I've been tortured with that shit enough in my life. Yeah. Hey, no, Scott Stapp came into our store the other day. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, he did. Let's, oh, move wow. Let's move along. Let's so move along. So there is there is a Creed, a Creed Alabama connection. I don't know what it is, man, but he came wow. walking into our store. Is he a regular? Uh, we'll, we'll move oh, on. Oh God, no, no. Oh, that's no. Uh, that's so cool. But uh, it's uh, horrible admission, guys. I, before we get to the spoilers, I can listen to that Spotify <laughs> Spotify playlist <laughs> without fear. I I find some of those songs on that playlist quite melodic music to my ears and um no, i'm i'm a bourgeois that, asian dude here in here in the valley so i i'm, it, I'm, I'm not saying i'm a, a purveyor of great taste but i I, do, I did enjoy the spotify playlist that they put up so but i will not that's, that, that, that that's perfectly acceptable i'm just saying i don't know <laughs> i've been subjected to that for like essentially held down and forced at gunpoint to listen to that music for so long yeah. I, I can't take it anymore. But Be I look, if you like Nickelback, if you like Creed, if you like Five Finger Death Punch and all that bullshit, I, I like Ariana Grande. So we're not yeah. all winners here. That, that's what I'm getting to. <laughs> well, you know, before we get to the spoilers, okay, I'll just chime in very quickly. The main character, Michael Abbott Jr., who plays Zeke Olsen, and I, Eric, to your point, I think yesterday – I, I came to my Jerry Maguire moment where I, I'm really focused on trying to get a screenplay done by a certain date. I don't know, just a future date. I'm going to start working on, on screenwriting. So I've been really focusing on the writing element of films now, just thanks to you and thanks to Anderson Cowan. Zeke Olsen, without giving too much away, we all know this. He, it's a gamble putting your lead character, making your lead character so ineffectual um, Brian De Palma is my favorite director. Most of his characters, his main characters are ultimately ineffectual protagonists. But in general, you don't do that. When you're writing a movie that can appeal to the mass, you want to have your main character at least go through some kind of redemptive arc or learn something at the end or have moments of weakness, but ultimately maybe shine through. And this is not a spoiler, Zeke Olsen is as flawed as they come. You are frustrated with him throughout the, uh, throughout the entire experience because, Eric, you were talking about the tension and Bruce, you were talking about the Hitchcock, Hitchcockian element of it. He is the worst Hitchcockian yeah. type of hero where he does not emote. It's all about cowering and hiding and not telling, not living up to the moment. And I can't wait till, till we get to the spoilers. And I, th I think I, I caught a little sneaky thing. And I don't know, I, I could be probably wrong about uh, Zeke's character. And, and maybe there might be a redemptive moment there. I could be wrong. But we'll get to the spoilers in a sec second. But I loved how the main character was really flawed. And Eric, to your point, I realized one of the things to make this more interesting and more palatable to the viewers 
is you make the courageous people, you can make them not the main character. You can make it his wife, Lydia Olson, played by Virginia Newcomb. She's excellent in this movie. And I, I hope casting directors, filmmakers see her performance in this movie and just, just cast her. She's, she, she can be, you can just put her in anything. I think she, she, she has all that emotional, I guess, weight in this movie and she does a great job. And then also Sarah Baker as Officer Dudley, you're really pulling for it because she's, without put, patting herself on the back, she's smart and she perseveres and she's, you know, she puts two and two together kind of, and you're pulling for both of them. They're, they're the strong characters. And sometimes you can actually have a weak lead like, like that Michael uh, Abbott Jr. character, Zeke. So I just thought that was a very risky move that they did with the death of Dick Long. And that's why I think this movie, Bruce, to your point, it will catch on as the months and as the years progress. And I hope people really appreciate the death of Dick Long. So. Spoilers. Spoilers. Eric right. Holmes, can you, can yes. you unwrap, can you unpack what the big, what is the big spoiler of the death of Dick Long, Eric Holmes? Well, before we get to that, I want to, I want to uh, kind of jump on uh, uh, Zeke um, a little bit yeah. because I think, I think why they get away with him um, and we're in spoilers, so I'm not backing that part up, but uh, just kind of adding to it. But uh, why Zeke, why they can get away with uh, Zeke as a main character is that I think that him and Earl are idiots and what if they don't if they don't get through uh if they don't figure out the whole murder thing um i there's no malice it, you don't get the sense that there's any malice in anything they've done they're just scared and they're idiots so the fact that oh if they get busted they're going to go to jail probably get you know death penalty or whatever comes of that and it's like yeah you guys are dumb and you guys fucked up which actually turns out they didn't, but we'll get into that. <laughs> um, but I, I think that's why you can kind of root for them a little bit because the uh, punishment that's looming over them, I don't think is deserved or you get the sense that it's not. Yeah. And that that's probably why they can, you know, maybe why you would root for them, but yeah, they're definitely uh, <laughs> not good people for sure. But I, I don't think it has anything to do with malice. I think it has everything to do with them just being boneheads. Irresponsible. Um, yeah. Yeah, they're <laughs> definitely Bruce. So you know what? You've reviewed this on Movie Mainline on your YouTube channel. What is the big big spoiler? Unwrap <laughs> no, that no, unwrap that big present. <laughs> unwrap <laughs> the a... dick. Unwrap the dick long right now. Yeah, okay. Uh so uh Pretty quickly on, uh, one of the people at the hospital discovers that um, Dick Long might have had some invasion of a lower area of his anatomy that you wouldn't expect to be invaded in a way that caused him to die in a bloody and painful death. But what was in there was from a horse. They found semen in his, in his system, yes. died of anal hemorrhaging. From being from a horse was a little bit rough with him. Yes, as, he was on the receiving end of the horse. On, on, he was the receiving end of the horse. I believe the horse's name is Comet. So <laughs> yes. uh, Comet was not a, a cleanser. It, Comet was really, sh oh. it was not, not a cleanser at all. So it was not, yeah. So yeah, that's how Dick Long died from yeah. love the, he, the uh, frantic Dick Long, and powerful. Dick Long died from a longer dick. Yes. Yeah. yes. We assume. we never saw we never saw Dick Long. Hey, yeah. It's a horse, you know it's longer. <laughs> Dick Long ain't you got me on that one. <laughs> right. <laughs> Dick Long ain't shown up to that contest. So, you know so what, my that, my that's disclaimer. so funny, Eric. That is so funny you said that because I'm just thinking about the, the now the title. You know, it is. It is it is a play on the horse. It, yeah. very, very good. And just Eric. the fact <laughs> that he that the director put himself as Dick Long. He said, like, well, if anyone's going to get fucked by the horse, it's going to be me. <laughs> and I don't know if you guys have seen his official picture on IMDb. I put it on my review. I don't know if you saw that. No. Yeah. <laughs> it's like an awkward high school uh, yearbook photo, and that's what he uses. So that alone tells you this guy's got a pretty good sense of humor to put that on his IMDb. But, you um, know, they could have, from the script, from Billy Chu's script, I don't know. I'm not a director like, you know, like uh, you're going to be Eric or, uh, or, or editor like you or, or, or Anderson or, or anything like that. I would have 
sold out. If I, if I saw Billy Chu's script and I'd say, okay, well, I'm going to make Dick Long die. Okay, if Dick Long died from that horse situation, then Zeke and Earl, I, I would have made them just onlookers or witnesses to the fact. Maybe, maybe Dick Long mm. actually was, the, was a jerk who actually said, hey, you know what? I'm going to try this out. And I'm going to try this one trick pony to see how many it's, I'm going to, I went from one trick, one trick pony and now I'm going to go to a real full fledged horse. See what I'm going to do guys. You know, maybe have some kind of flashback that, that suggests it and have those two, two guys, Zeke and, and Earl look horrified. So then you just throw the sympathy on these two characters, but no, we learn that both of them, both Earl and Zeke, they've been part of that whole comet world for Years on end. Years, yeah, years. Well, one thing I didn't quite in. Um, yeah, maybe sure. it's all the uh, maybe it's all the soundtrack that just kind of, you know, the movie started washing over me, you know. Or, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I didn't understand if if he died because if he was bleeding because he got fucked by the horse. I'm assuming. Yes. Why didn't they just bring him to the hospital? I don't understand. I, granted, I just mentioned that they're dumb, so maybe it's just as simple as that. But did I miss something? Like, I don't think they did anything other than bring him to the hospital. So the fact that they're being sneaky about it didn't quite make sense to me. I just think they didn't want to get their, their secret get out. It'd be like yeah. three guys who go out every weekend and cheat on their wives, and there's going to be something that's going to expose that. But it's worse than that. And oh, think, so so that's just something they do. They just go and fuck a horse, and then but one of them died as a result. Pretty much, yeah, yeah. Okay, I miss that part. And, I, I I thought because uh, when when uh when the horse part was revealed, I was under the impression that um they were just drunk and like, eh, yeah. dare you to fuck the horse? I'll fucking do anything, man. I'm I'm Taz, man. I'm the crazy man. That would no. have been, and then Such- a bad thing happened. Eric, that would have been such the, the real. The I don't even want to way. even say safest route because that's not even a, that twist is not safe. The horse twist is not safe whatsoever. But they could have made it a lot easier by making those two other guys sympathetic, like like you were saying, like oh, like have Dick Long be the guy. But the fact that all three of them, Bruce, were in on this and their Pink Freud get-togethers, they weren't doing you know another brick in the wall. They were they were putting another something into the horse on a, on a nightly basis. And that's the thing that I think a lot of people will just say, no, this is, this movie is absolutely not for me too much. Yeah. Well, see, that's the, that's the key to the, the, the kitchen scene where he finally has to come, come out with what's happened to his wife because there's that moment there. And that's what I think she's so amazing. Cause first of all, to ask an actress to act that scene, but to take it and play it seriously all the way through. Like she doesn't play it for laughs. She doesn't play it like broad. Mm-hmm. And to when it goes to that step where she finds out what he does and then she goes like, and she, I forget what she says exactly because it's been a little longer since I've seen it. But there's some point in there and you can tell me because you just saw it where she says like, like well, it was just this once, right? And he kind of just looks at her like, no. And then she basically it dawns on her that it's been happening even since before they were together. Yeah, he actually, and, he finally yeah. admits that. Yeah, I, this uh, is, hey, it's not your fault, honey. This all this stuff came before, well, literally and figuratively, came before you. Okay, all this stuff was right before you. And you know, obviously, by the way, I, I know nothing about Alabama, but they have a for that house. They have that that bar, that barn area with that. They have some space. They actually have some oh, yeah. space. So there's I don't I don't know. I, are a lot of houses in Alabama like that where you can actually get some a good bang for your buck for for property. Oh yes, tons of space. Everything is still pretty wide open down here. I mean, it's a lot of it's it's a really green state, which is something that kind of surprised me. Um wow. it's not a hilly state, but a very green state and lots of I mean one minute, I mean, two blocks from our house which is like a suburban neighborhood is just a open like farmland. So yeah, you see it a lot. Um I also wanted to point out awesome. that if you guys are familiar with Zoo, have you ever seen or heard of that that documentary Zoo? I thought of that while watching this. Yeah. <laughs> I thought of that and I thought of uh the Bobcat Goldthwait stay or Sleeping Dogs Lie. Sleeping Dogs Lie, yeah, that's the other Pretty one. Pretty much any movie that had to do with someone having sex with an animal just came flooding in my head all at once. But Zoo was the most oh. obvious connection because Zoo is yeah. about that real case in Washington State not too far from another place I used to live. Disclaimer, I have nothing to do with that. 
<laughs> um, uh, where they, they literally go in and, and have the documentary about this like group that would get together and do this. And a guy did get killed in that way. And it was a really infamous case in Washington state. When that happened, it became kind of big, big news item. Um, so, I mean, I'm sure that was kind of a kicking off point. They probably, I'm sure they heard that and they said like, well, if that really happened in your life, what happens to all the people around you? I mean, I, I feel like that was probably the kickoff of this. Like, what is the real world around when something like crazy like that happens? And mm -hmm. to, to imagine like the real life surrounding that, but also make it an entertaining story is really unique. And like you said, pretty daring. Um, and once again, I want to, I want to point out when in the scene in the kitchen, especially with her, with Lydia, Virginia Newcomb, the way she acts that out. And then as she starts to get him to leave the house, and I, I always was struck by how the way she's like going by and the kids coming out and she kind of hides the knife off to the side and you keep expecting that knife to be like a big thing. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. And once again, that's a perfect example. She didn't like swing it at him. She didn't stab him with it. There's a bomb just, under the table. It's totally right. It's that threat. And you know, she's just emotionally on edge, but she's also hiding it. And there's all those little touches that they give you to give you like, you know, there she is, she's at the door, the kid comes out, she's got it next to her so the kid can't see the knife. Like all those little touches that just add and ramp up the tension and the emotion in those scenes. Which is what about Zeke great. Olsen? He's just grabbing that lamp and he's just trying to yeah. punch it. And you're thinking, is this going to be, is that lamp going to be destroyed? No, it's just a guy at his wits end and he's just holding a lamp and pretending the shadow box around it. But you're still tense because you think he's going to explode eventually. And ultimately, well, Eric Holmes, like well, I, 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 I read, I read that different. I, I read that as uh, he wants to, he wants to hit something or break something because, like you said, he's he's at the end of his rope, but he knows he can. not And uh -huh. so it's kind of like a kind of like screaming into a pillow. But you yes. don't want to scream too loud because there's someone yeah. right next to you. So you're just even though you have the pillow over your face, you're like, Ooh. Yeah. And like you you want it's just bubbling up and you got to get something out and it's not you can almost oh you really want to punch that lamp but you can't quite do it um yeah that yeah that that was a really good scene i i've i've been in not punching lamps but i've been in like similar <laughs> situations i'm like I've, I've been there i've been there and i know exactly what you're thinking right now minus the i will go to jail for murder but yeah, this movie just has so many interesting characters. And you were, Eric, you're talking about the Big Lebowski. And mm -hmm. one of the great things about the Big Lebowski is you can take all those in those all all those supporting characters, and you want to see them in another movie. Unfortunately, I think John Turturro went and made another movie, <laughs> which didn't get good reviews. Remember the, yeah. I, I forgot what the name of that movie, but the it got Jesus, the, like the continuing life of Jesus or whatever it was. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. but. But that's truth. The Big Lebowski has so many interesting characters. Same thing with this movie. I actually, as this movie ended, I actually wanted to see more of these characters. Yeah. In further, that's not going to happen. But you don't. But you don't. You do. But you don't. Like you really don't want to see him because it would kind of ruin it. But the fact that he builds this and it, it wants you to know that full, those full characters. Like even Earl, you don't really see that much of Earl if you think about it. You could have seen more of, again, yeah. this goes to the point of how this movie is uncompromising and it doesn't pander. They could have sprinkled Earl throughout the entire movie for low hanging fruit jokes, which I would have been fine with. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But they, the whole chunk of the movie, he's gone. Right. He's gone. Now, I don't know if you uh, probably, Eric, you probably remember the ending very well. Bruce, I'm sure you remember the ending as well, too. I just thought, and I'll, I'm wondering, do you think Zeke Olsen at the end, do you think the light bulb sort of comes on? And I'm going to argue, I think it might slowly come on. I, as far as what? Well, okay, my so, light bulb's not going on right now. <laughs> well, my, my, light, my, my light bulb is never on. Probably Bruce is make my flash again or something. Probably Bruce is the only smart one out of us three. Eric, no, at least you're the good. You're a good writer, so I, I, I you're verified for me. Um, but a little check, blue check, please. Blue check. <laughs> no, towards the end, when when Zeke visits Earl and his neighbor, they're having a little bit of a fling at the what local motel. Yeah. And because because Earl is wants to leave, he still hasn't left yet. But eventually, he's going to leave because he thinks they're they're all in trouble. So 
it sucks because Earl's got to leave his friend, Zeke, but Zeke visits Earl after everything. He gets out of jail he, and they sit down. I don't know if they're having a beer. Maybe they're having a beer on the on the sidewalk right next to the room, the motel room where, where Earl I'm sure they're having staying. a beer the entire movie, but yeah. 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 <laughs> it's a safe bet. <laughs> yeah. It, they have the, they had a little joke when the, when the girl, she's played, she's played by a comedian. And she's, and she's really good. Yeah. She's, she's in Glow. Tell, Oh, she's in Glass? That's what I knew her yeah. from. I knew I knew her from something. And I was like, I totally recognized her and I couldn't figure out who she was. And I didn't go back and check. Yeah, Glow. Sunita, Sunita Manny, M-A-N-I. She plays Lake Travis. She plays a girl who's really into Earl. They could make they could have made another movie with the, with that relationship. That's that's yeah. a fun. Yeah. <laughs> it's really Yeah, she's in a tiny bit of the movie, but she really likes and once again, they make her much richer than she needs to be. She, she has to be, I guess you'd say. And, yeah. and it's interesting. And the same thing with um, just having Dick Long's wife show up. I didn't even think she was going to show up at all. And I really appreciated the way they brought her into the story and then how she was brought into the end of the story too. But, um, and once again, totally interesting. Like, what was her relationship with Dick Long? And that's a whole other level that you only get oh, glimpses of. That's a whole other level. But towards the end, they're sitting together, Zeke and Earl. Yeah. And Earl has this plan of just, going away and just big getaway leaving town and the girl um the girl thinks that they're going someplace and then zeke asks earl he goes earl what's gonna happen when she realizes that that you're going nowhere and it's a subtle line but it's the first time in that whole entire story where zeke has this moment of reflection like okay i'll probably join you guys on this trip where we're just circling around America, but what's going to happen when it's not going anywhere. And then yeah. the movie closes and it's a really, it's a really subtle line that I'm wondering if Billy Chu or the director, if they just use that line to close the movie or if they use that line, because it's very just hidden in there. They use that line to say, well, you know what, whatever you think of this guy, Okay, because he's still obsessed with a horse. Let's face it. Okay, he lets right. a horse go, but that's still he has that sickness. Whatever you think of him, he may, for once, might actually have a little bit of a light bulb in that noggin of his. Yeah, and I thought that was interesting. At the very least, a seed's been planted. Finally, yeah. Well, and if there's an arc, you could say that kind of is the arc, right? Because I mean, it starts out with three guys. Arrested development, obviously, like these are, they're acting like teenagers or at least young 20s and they're not that old anymore, but they're acting like they're still partying their whole life away. So I guess you'd say like, that's kind of his guilty. Path, like, yeah, but I mean, no, but I mean, <laughs> Eric, how old are you, by the way? How old are, wait, hold on. So how old are you, Eric? 42. Okay. Yeah. He's, a, he's a young one, right, Bruce? He is. <laughs> yes. Listen to your gray bearded friends. No. Uh, <laughs> But I mean, I think maybe if nothing else, like you said, at the end, he's at least a little bit self-aware, like, look what this has brought me to, you know, look what I've lost. Because as far as you know, at the end of the movie, he's pretty much, I mean, he's lost his wife. I don't, yeah, she's, of course. I, I don't think there's any way she's coming back. And, and even worse, he might have to, lost his daughter or to a great degree lost her, yeah. you know, because, so I mean, that fact might be hitting him and he's kind of thinking that, projecting that to, you know, Earl, like, seeing Earl is like, yeah, you're going down the same path I'm going down. Look, you're going to end up where I'm at now, you know, with your dead end friend at the hotel on the side of the highway. Um, yeah, that's good. That's, that's probably right on, I think. Yeah, so ultimately my, my final review is, yeah, I, I really enjoyed this movie. Um, I'm glad you picked it, Bruce, for our, our rewind. And uh, how did you, how did you see this, Eric? Did you just check it out on Voodoo or? I rented it on either YouTube or uh amazon i think it was youtube i don't know they're both kind of i saw it on youtube but i think i i don't know one of them yeah i think oh, i did amazon same same sort of thing like three three four bucks something like that before we yeah. go when once we cut once we get back um to do our our movie mainline um our podcast next tuesday i want to actually check one of eric's picks what was the name of that orwell film again the george orwell a life in pictures a george life orwell in life in pictures George Orwell, A Life in Pictures. I will check that out. And uh, anything else to say, guys, before we go? I I wanted to uh, make a, well, we were talking about the end. Um, yeah. 
there's one point that I kind of wish I'm glad it went on because there was a couple other character moments. Uh, one like you pointed out, and then there's uh, one where he's trying to uh, kiss his wife, and she's like, uh. <laughs> um, you know, because you, you tell right away she's just over it. Um, yeah. But there's a the the point with the two cops, uh, and they're and they're walking, and he's like, you know, this is the second time this has happened. She's like, huh? <laughs> if they would have cut to black right there. I'd been like, that was pretty good ending. Yeah. I, I'm I'm glad they went further, but like after I saw that, I'm like, this is in. This is in. The movie's still going. Why is the movie still going? It ended three seconds. I also wonder if I'm just. I just realized this. I also wonder if the car in the what the creek or the water mm -hmm. reference is a reference to Psycho as well. Maybe that's yes, absolutely. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I think that first that first portion where they're doing all the hiding the crime stuff, they're they're referencing a bunch of movies because of course they overtly reference Pulp Fiction, you know. They, and re then, they reference this is spoiler, so we, I don't mind, but they reference Dana Carvey in Master of Disguise in this movie. <laughs> I miss that. Yeah, no, no. He's, Earl me mentions. <laughs> yeah, he goes something like he looked like a Dana Carvey in, in Master of the Sky. Just, oh, like, okay. It, it was in the beginning of the movie, and I. This is just when he was just mumbling words, and I go, "What the heck are you doing?" And then, and that's right after he mentions, "Oh, I can't, I can't throw that emergency, that emergency excuse to my boss anymore because I use that when we we're when we went to the Papa Roach concert." And it's just uh, these are throwaway lines that are really. You see, it's funny to us if we're not fans of Papa Roach or if you feel like you're highbrow or it's not your music, but the way they deliver it, it's who they are. And right. that's the difference between pandering to the audience or the characters and actually making the characters real and the, the humor, come out, it comes out of who they actually are and it doesn't adhere to these comedic or narrative beats yeah, like your average film. So. Like, yeah, like if it doesn't work as a... Yeah, if it doesn't work as a joke, it still works as a true character moment. Yeah, that, yeah that's a good, uh, that's a good uh, little catcher's net to have, I guess. Yes. I, I also think like another thing you're saying about how the the psycho reference and all that stuff. You were talking about how ineffectual Zeke is and how he just doesn't. I think that also in the same way you're talking about um, kind of putting these references in, but that's just part of their world. All, also, you're almost showing how all these old movie references don't work in the real world, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. they can't clean things the way they see it in the movie. They can't, they can't lose the car the way they've seen in the movie. It's almost like they've found all these ways to do to get rid of the crime, but it's based on, like, this imaginary world. But you see it in this world, it doesn't work. Like, they can't get the car to sink all the way, you know? Yeah. They can't get the car <laughs> cleaned out. Um, you know, it just doesn't work the way that it would work in a movie, you know? So and I and I appreciated that too. That's once again like taking it and just twisting it a little bit, and just giving that little element of um, kind of character in the actions there too. So it's good stuff. Do you guys think this was shot on digital or film? Because I I have no idea. It had a real nice look to it, and it didn't feel sharp and crispy know. as digital. It just it just I felt say, like I would say digital. It's probably say, touch up a bit, maybe. But. Yeah. Um, I I don't know because I don't quite have that kind of eye. Like, so mm -hmm. it, if it's real overt, I can tell. But I mean, it, it looks like a lot of independent movies I've seen that have yeah. been shot on like a DSLR or something like that. Probably not shot on that, but I mean, yeah, it it didn't look uh didn't jump out as it was on film to me. Yeah, I really love this movie. All right, guys, uh, that is it. Uh, we will we will be back next Tuesday for a real episode of Movie Mainline. Louis Lacau will be joining us. Check us out. Anything else you want, Bruce? You want to plug something with your your content creation stuff or yeah, spotlights? Just check out um, either check out the Movie Mainline uh, Facebook page, and I put a lot of my content over there, especially if it's Movie Mainline related. I have been doing uh, creator spotlights, and I'm also doing uh, Mainline Memories, which is uh, memorable movie going moments, which one of them recently like expanded out to a 45 minute conversation. So you never know what you're going to get there. You get some little extra content. So. And Eric Holmes, you are in full filmmaking screenwriting mode. You want to actually make connections with people who are really looking for advice or insights on their respective scripts. Yes. I'm going to, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see what comes of that, but uh, got a couple episodes of uh, 
and we'll wait till it comes out. But I, I got some surprises up my sleeve. I really hate that Eric Holmes is not throwing the spoiler. He's not saying anything right now. <laughs> what am I just? I, uh, am, am I a listener, <laughs> Eric Holmes? I should be actually. No, no, my it, lack of it's, talent. It, it's got a lot of ways to fail. So if I say it out loud, it's more likely to fail. Whereas if I just do it, then it'll come out. But yeah, I got. I, got a, I want to try to do a couple of mini uh, screenwriting episodes, and we'll see how those turn out. Okay, that's the, that's the short version. You know, I am going to uh, sign off now, and I will talk to you guys next week. Bruce Perky, Eric Holmes, and I am Greg Srusavosti. For we are Movie Mainline. We are part of the Movie Mainline. Lewis, we miss you, and we will see you guys next week.